Um, recently, I have been feeling like I'm living in a Dickens book. I feel like we're living in the best of times and the worst of times. We are seeing an absolutely incredible progress. Progress that I could not have predicted at all, even five years ago. It is kind of spectacular. But I'm also struck that I can't go a week, it doesn't feel like at least, without seeing news of a transgender person who has died somewhere in this country or elsewhere in the world. I can't experience a week, it feels like, when I'm not hearing about sometimes somebody I know who has died, and especially transgender women of color who are experiencing such levels, high levels of hate violence in this country. And I just wanted to take a minute tonight because in the Bay Area alone, we have lost some incredible people in the last year. We're going to be recognizing a whole bunch of people, unfortunately, at the Day of Remembrance this November. But I wanted to take a moment of silence now, and if folks can help me have a moment of silence, I know it's tough in the space, but I feel like there are people who are not here, who should be here tonight. People like Christopher Lee, Melina Cruz, Mike McLeod, Melanie Elenake, and Jazzy Collins. Can you all join me in just a moment of silence for those incredible people who have given so much to our community? I appreciate that. Jazzy was one of the first people I met when I started coming up, back up to San Francisco to work at Transgender Law Center. And I didn't know who Jazzy was, I just knew that she was everywhere. <laughs> I could not go to a meeting without Jazzy showing up and speaking about the needs of trans folk. And I loved the number of times she would show up and just drop in at Transgender Law Center and said, Mason, you gotta pay attention to this. And I sure missed that. I encourage those of you who are new on the scene, drop by the Transgender Law Center and say, hey Mason, you've got to pay attention to this. We all need it. Now, there have been some really great things that have happened this year. I am ecstatic, actually, at some of the progress we're making extending health care to transgender people. In just the last few months, the state of California has now said it is illegal to have transgender exclusions and health plans <coughs> regulated by the state. That's kind of a BFD. <laughs> I think about my friend, I'll call him Lance for now. Lance has been a small business owner for years in California. He transitioned when he was 18. He's in his 50s today. And for so many years, he has not been able to get any health care because merely being a transgender person was considered to be a pre-existing condition. We are pre-existing conditions. So he was not able, as a small business owner, to get any health care coverage for himself. What's exciting to me is with the Affordable Care Act in January 1st, 2014, Lance is going to be able to get a policy and a plan that will cover him as a transgender man. And because of the changes that are happening in the insurance plans in California, he shouldn't just get basic coverage for things like diabetes and heart disease and everything else that we need. But that care now should be provided without discrimination. He should now get mental health care coverage, he should get hormones, and yes, he should get surgery. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean everything's perfect. The best of times are on paper. The worst of times are what we're hearing at Transgender Law Center, where we're getting calls from many of you every day saying, yeah, that's great, and I'm still being denied health care. The insurance company is still saying that they won't cover me and they won't provide the care we need. And I am so grateful, i got to tell you, for folks like Matt Wood and Danny Kirchhoff and Sasha Booker <laughs> and Logan Turner, <laughs> I'm I am so grateful for our team that answers all of those calls, lets people know how to fight for themselves, and, and we'll continue to advocate until we know that everybody gets all of the care that we need and deserve. And that day will come. Meanwhile, 
know, we've had some great progress in when it comes to services for our youth. We are having a revolution in our youth. Our youth are no longer waiting until they're 18 or 42 or 57 or 83 to come out and know who they are. Our youth, they know, and they are telling us, and they are telling their schools. And you know, what's extra neat for somebody like me from small town Missouri is oftentimes their parents are supporting them. We are getting more calls for every school year from parents and young trans kids saying, how do I make sure my kid is supported and safe? The world is changing. So this year, Transgender Law Center worked with a whole bunch of partners and Tom Amiano to introduce the bill, the School Success and Opportunity Act, AB 1266. Any of you heard about this? Yeah. It's another DFD. This bill, this law now, says that transgender youth in our schools, K-12, have to have access to facilities and activities that match our gender identity. Okay? This means that these young trans youth should not be having to worry about what restroom they go to, what sports teams they go to, or whether or not they can make it throughout the day and participate in after school activities. I used to change clothes in the bushes on the way to class in the second grade. And I trained myself in high school to not have to use the restroom from pre-class, which I went to preschool because I was like before school classes, all through high school because I'm that kind of geek. Um, so between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m., I learned how to not have to use the restroom because I knew I would not be safe there as a gender non-conforming kid. Youth in California high schools and elementary schools and junior high schools they should not have that issue anymore. This law makes sure that they are able to be themselves and supported and are able to participate and learn like anybody else in school. That's great. Our youth are happy. And yet we are seeing unprecedented attacks now from the right wing. Attacks on our kids. Attacks on the basic identity and safety and security of transgender people. I think we've got another slide somewhere. So this is the kind of thing that we're hearing from opponents of the School Success and Opportunity Act. Hateful language that's directed to our children and to transgender people, saying that we are less than human and that supporting us is somehow going to end the world as we know it. Now, if we end discrimination as we know it, that's a good thing. But we have to just acknowledge that we have largely achieved our successes by flying under the radar. It is a secret at Transgender Law Center, and I'll come out today. We do a lot really quietly. We have made some of our biggest gains that nobody has noticed. We are very quiet and thoughtful about what we do, because we want to make sure we have the win more than we want to have the publicity. And that has been largely effective. We're not the only one. Many organizations have done this, and we've been able to get a lot done. But I need to tell you that the days of doing things quietly are coming to an end. It is time to get ready for our close-up, folks. The right wing is on to us. Now, the National Organization for Marriage that fought same-sex marriage, they now have signed on as a lead opponent to AB 1266. And they are working with registered at this point identified hate groups to try to stop the School Success and Opportunity Act from being enacted. They have filed a referendum and they have until November 8th to get the signatures they need to make sure the law never takes effect. That's not going to happen. But folks, these attacks have just begun. We cannot be complacent because whether or not they get enough signatures to get on the ballot this time, they are not going to stop. These folks are all over Fox News, they're all over the media, elsewhere, and they're all over the churches right now, calling on October to be a month of harvest, to harvest signatures to stop the School Success and Opportunity Act. So I have to ask for your support today, folks, because we have to be vigilant more than ever. We have to be public more than ever. 
and we need to show our allies and our strengths more than we ever have had to before. Are you with me?